Hello there explorers and welcome to A Bugman's Life. Today we'll be looking at the what's, why's and how's of feeding your ants. Before we can look at exactly what to feed your ants, we need to understand what they need and why they need it so that we can supply our ants with the correct food for them to survive. Firstly, your ants will need a carbohydrate or sugar source. This is used mainly by the worker and soldier ants in order to survive. It gives them the energy they need to perform all the tasks in the colony that they need to, such as feeding the queen, the larvae, foraging and going out to hunt for food. Secondly, your colony will also need a protein source. The proteins are mainly used by the larvae and the queen. The larvae uses it as a growth source because they use the proteins to build their body and the queen uses it to produce and lay eggs. And lastly, your queen and colony will require a source of vitamins and minerals and this is essential because it keeps your ants healthy and thriving. Without it, they will most likely suffer the same as human scurvy at the end of the day, which will lead to the death of your colony. Supplying your ants with a carbohydrate or sugar source is as simple as the name suggests. You can give them some sugar water or some honey. Now, honey you can give straight as it is, just a small little drop using a toothpick and giving it to them. But you can also give them sugar water in a small dish. Now, if you make sugar water, a really good ratio to aim for is 25% sugar solution. What does that mean? That means that 25% of your solution needs to be sugar and the other 75% needs to be water. The best way to make this and to make it as simple as possible, that means 2.5 milliliters of sugar to 7.5 milliliters of water. One of the very cool stuff that you can do with your sugar water and feeding your ants is you can add some food coloring to it. That way you can track which ants in the colony got the food and you can see how much they ate because you'll see their gasters swell up and then you can see the color that you've added to your food through the sides of their gaster. The protein source for your colony might be a bit more difficult to source, but it's just as easy to feed. And that is mostly insects. Whether it's small cockroaches, large cockroaches, flies or mealworms, any of them will work to feed your colony. Any other bug that you find outside will most likely also work. The most important thing is to pre-kill the insects before you put them in. And one of the most humane ways to do this is to put it in the freezer for half an hour to an hour and then just leave it in there. And when you take it out, thaw it and make sure that it is completely thawed through and then feed your colony. Sometimes, especially with smaller colonies, it might be a good idea to cut open the insect so that your ants can get access to the juicy insides of the insects. Because remember, insects have exoskeletons and eating through an exoskeleton is usually not the easiest thing to do. Last but not least are the vitamins and minerals. Your ants will obtain a lot of vitamins and minerals through the insects they consume, but you can supplement this with some fruit and vegetable slices that you feed your ants. They will not eat the fruit and vegetable as is and chew off parts, but they will go and drink the juice of the fruit and vegetable that will contain the necessary vitamins and minerals that your ants need. How and how much you feed your colony is dependent on the colony size and the enclosure that they are in. The first way that I like to feed my colonies is with a test tube feeder. This tiny feeder ensures that there are no ants escaping and as the name suggests, this is specifically for test tube feeding. Secondly, I like to use foil. Foil is a great way to feed any colony size because you can cut it to size or even just rip it to the size that you need and then place it in the enclosure with a small drop of food or small insect piece on top. This ensures that the test tube or substrate in your outworld stays clean and the environment for the ants stay healthy. The last and most likely the one that I use the most often are bottle caps because bottle caps are great to use in larger enclosures because it ensures that the food stays together, doesn't gunk up the soil and stuff and it gives easy access to the ants for food. Also because it's big with the lip on the side, you can feed quite a lot in a bottle cap which makes it excellent for larger colonies. Let us feed a few ant colonies using the blue sugar solution that I have made and my trusty syringe. First up are the Anoplelepis custodians colony that we saw last week with a few workers. We will be using the test tube feeder to feed this colony. 
So firstly, I will insert the test tube feeder by taking out their cotton, using a small piece along with the test tube feeder, and then place it back inside the test tube as it is intended. Then I will take out the little tub at the bottom, take up a drop of sugar water in my syringe and fill up the small feeding dish. That way, it will ensure that the ants can access the liquid and when they get more, they cannot run out of the test tube when I feed them. And they will now soon figure out that there is some liquid for them to eat there. They will enjoy this sugar solution and really go to town on it, most likely finishing most of this blue sugar solution. While we will now wait for these ants to find their food, let's feed the Tetramuria. They should be quite quickly on the food and really active around their food dish, which will be a tiny piece of foil. I will open their nest and then place the foil in and afterwards I will put a small drop of sugar water on top of the foil. That way I ensure that I don't spill it when I try and put the foil inside their nest. One important trick is to bend up one side when you're putting it in the enclosure. That way you've got something to grip and put it down flat, which makes it much easier. Then just one small drop directly on the foil and that way, let's make it two, there's a lot of ants in here. That way they will find the food quite quickly and then enjoy it as they need to. Last but not least of the colonies that we're feeding today is the long-legged sugar ants, Campenotus etiolopes. Let's put the tetramurium aside and let them enjoy their sugar water while we move over and we feed these massive ants. Now this is Campenotus etiolopes, one of the largest Campenotus species within South Africa. And they are quite the good escape masters, that's why they have a lid on their enclosure. And you'll see that they ran right through the baby powder barrier in the corners. So I will feed them and then I will ensure that I close them up quickly while I'm showing you how they enjoy their sugar water. So firstly, what I'll do is I'll get their cap and the syringe with sugar water ready before I open them again. So open the lid, give them their bottle cap, press it gently into the sand so that it doesn't slide around and then fill up their bottle cap with some sugar water and you'll see immediately the first end is directly on top of the sugar water ready to start enjoying and drinking that nice sweet treat And that is the what's, why's and how's of feeding your ant colony. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and go share this video with your friends. And if you learned something new today, hit that like button. Then I will see you explorers next time.